late Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam once said, a dream is not something that you see while sleeping. It is something that does not let you sleep. We are sure that this will happen here at ASMSOC. Good morning and a warm welcome to the orientation program for the first year BBA students at SVKM's NMIMS Anil Surendra Modi School of Commerce to those attending in person as well as those joining us online across campuses. Sanjana Pongshe and I, Saksham Airi, appreciate the august presence of the dignitaries on the dais. Our mentor and joint honorary secretary, Mr. Shalin Devetia, Dean, School of Commerce, Professor Sangeeta Kher, and our associate deans, Dr. Sunny Oswal and Dr. Minu Mehta. We welcome our faculty members, parents, and the upcoming batch of first years to the orientation program of Anil Surendra Modi School of Commerce. To begin the orientation program, we seek the blessings of Ma Saraswati, who endows us with the powers of speech, wisdom, and learning. I request the dignitaries on the dais to please come forward for the lighting of the lamp and the Saraswati Vandana. I request all to stand for the occasion. all to remain standing please for the NMIMS anthem. Let me now give you an insight into the decades-long successful journey of NMIMS University so far. 
NMIMS was founded in 1981 by the parent body Sri Vilepale Kilavni Mandal as a management institute affiliated with the University of Mumbai. And later, on the basis of significant amount of work and recognition as one of the top business schools in India, NMIMS received the deemed university status in 2003. ASMSOC is a commerce and management school under the NMIMS banner which commenced its first academic batch in the year 2007. Our school offers BBA, BSc Finance and BCom Honours. The school also began with its coveted MSc Finance program in 2017. ASMSOC is thrilled to be crowned the number one emerging BBA department by India today and has also been ranked and has also been ranked second in the category of top BBA colleges of 2023, both by Outlook Eye Care and India Today. <laughs> Students at the School of Commerce represent a microcosm of India, united in their academic credentials, bringing to life the very ideal of unity in diversity. Each program offered at the School of Commerce aims to equip students with a bedrock of management skills to help them navigate through the complex business environments of today. A dynamic curriculum designed in conjunction with academic and industry practitioners provides students the opportunities to master new skills and explore varied perspectives. The school follows a strict attendance norm to instill discipline and a sense of responsibility in its students. Students are requested to be mindful of their dressing in the school premises as the school has visitors, visitors, guests from the industry for guest lectures and placements year around. How can we talk about the glorious journey NMIMS embarked on from its very inception and not introduce the pillars holding the very foundation? I would now like to introduce Dr. Meenu Mehta, Associate Dean and Professor of Economics at ASM SOC. Dr. Meenu Mehta is a certified leadership trainer and TEDx speaker. She has more than 30 years of experience across diverse functions like curriculum design, accreditation, and international collaborations. She's a recipient of several awards as well as the AIMS Innovation Research and Fellowship Grant. I request Dr. Meenu Mehta to please address the students. Good morning, everyone. Esteemed members on the dais, Shalin sir, our dean, Professor Sangeeta, my colleague, associate dean, Professor Sunny, honored parents sitting in person and as part of our webcast across the country, and the heroes of today's program, and that is our dear students, my colleagues, staff, faculty, management, a very warm welcome to each one of you as you commence your journey today and become part of our NMIMS family. As our anchors have already told you, we are immensely proud of the fact that we belong to the NMIMS umbrella and the School of Commerce is one of the most coveted places when it comes to management and business and commerce education across the country. The very fact that you people have received the opportunity to study over here speaks eons not only of your capability as students but also the trust that you place in our brand. To all the parents 
here as well as part of the web audience. We are deeply honored by the trust that you have reposed in us by allowing us to borrow your children for a brief period of three years and becoming a part of their journeys. To each of the students sitting over here, and I can see many of you are kneeling down, many of you are sitting in the aisles, some of you had to shift to our uh, school building because our auditorium was choking full. What does that tell you about us? The huge popularity of our program and our ability to inspire so many of you to make journeys from such far corners of the country to come and join us. At NMIMS, what we believe is not only in imparting traditional education, but also we lay a lot of emphasis when it comes to character building. Because college, after all, is not the only place where you are here to receive education, but this is also the place where we want you to forge your character, where we want you to examine your values, and where we want to prepare you for an India today that promises boundless opportunities. I'm sure all of you will agree that this is one of the best times ever in the history of our country to be young and to be receiving education here. From making India to incredible India, we have proved time and again that India is the place to be, and as per projections, by 2030, we are set to become the third largest economy of the world. I'm sure all of you are aware that this is the period when our country is undergoing the process of demographic dividend. In very simple terms, more than half of our population is below the age of 25. And in this slice of population, I'm extremely proud to say that the most talented group is sitting in front of us. A huge round of applause. We promise you that the trust with which you have entered the hallowed gates of NMIMS we will be there to hold your hand. We will be there to motivate you. We will be there to encourage you. And at times, we will also be there to correct you, to discipline you. Because after all, what is it that we stand here for? We stand here for excellence. We stand here as mentors and custodians of your dreams because as part of the NMIMS student population, what we have today is a talent immense and an extremely talented, capable population from which the future CEOs, the business managers, the startup entrepreneurs, and the head honchos of who's who are about to emerge. In our classes, you will understand not only theories and concepts, which any other college does, but we make efforts to offer you the bridge to walk between corporate and academia. The internship experiences that we offer, the academic rigor that is part of our institution is all here to prepare you for an uncertain world that also offers boundless opportunities. So once more, a very warm welcome to each one of you. We wish you a very happy journey and a lifetime of memories. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. It's an honor to introduce our mentor and joint honorary secretary, Mr. Shalin Devetia. He is designated as a fellow chartered accountant and an associate company secretary. He has co-authored books on employee stock options, 
published by the Bombay Chartered Accountant Society. He has also delivered lectures on ESOPs, joint ventures, and collaborations at forums like Indian Merchant Chambers, Chartered Accountant Gatherings, and Management Institutes. His articles are published in the Economic Times and the Institute of Chartered Financial Analyst magazine. On the professional front, he has advised on company formation, legal compliance, taxation, and documentation. He has also assisted in the creation of royalty and technical assistance agreements, as well as memorandums of understanding. I request our mentor and joint honorary secretary, Mr. Shalin Devetia, to now please address the students. Thank you for those very warm words. I always come here for this orientation and uh, to hear these nice words. And I feel like home. For 14 years, I've been hearing the same words. <laughs> of course, at, why home? But because at my wife, after so many years, also says, you're still the same, no improvement. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dean, uh, Mrs. Sangeeta Kher, Associate Dean, Dr. Minu Mehta, Associate Dean, Dr. Sunny Oswal, parents, whether present in the auditorium or uh, on webcast, and my dear, dear, young, bright, enthusiastic friends. We are extremely glad to have this new batch. We had those couple of years when things were in uh, the corona period and you had all these, uh, the offside, what do you call it? Offline, online, sorry, online education. <clears throat> this particular school, as has already been said before me, is a very, very prestigious school for us. And the BBA program is ranked depending on which magazine you prefer as number one or number two. But many times people ask us a question that you already have a BMS program in your traditional colleges in Narsi Monji, Mithibai, and then why do you have corresponding BCom, BMS, the same programs which you have there, why do you have them here? What is the difference? Let me give you a brief background. The Mumbai University has its range for students from Thane district right up to Ratnagiri or Sindhudurg district. So you can imagine that whereas these young minds, they come from families which are able to afford them good schooling, they're able to afford them a good exposure, they have good teachers. Whereas if you go to the interiors, when you go 400, 500 kilometers down south, you have students who do not have electricity, who do not have proper homes, who do not have good teachers, who do not have the kind of exposure that all of you are fortunate to have. And therefore, Bombay University has to frame a curriculum, or Mumbai University, pardon me, <clears throat> has to frame a curriculum which is in line with the general mass. Otherwise, only the students from, or very limited students would pass and the rest of them would fail. So that is when we thought that here we are sitting in a globalized world. And in this globalized environment, these students are going to compete with the best in the world, whether as part of uh, an, an organization, whether they settle abroad, whether they aspire for further studies, whether in business or corporate organizations. And we realize that their potential is absolutely unutilized. So that is why we started this SVKM's NMIMS deemed to be university. So that we can have a curriculum which is competing with the best in the world, which prepares the students for the kind of rigor, opens up their mind to different vistas, the way it should have if they should compete in the world. 
And that is why we started this Deem to be University, where we have the right to make our own curriculum. And <clears throat> another question which might often pop up in your mind, say, what is this Deem to be University? And in India you have a university, and then you have a deemed university, and another deemed to be university. So what is all this? I mean, is it that the grammar changes every few years? No, this is the UGC nomenclature. The UGC has changed as various laws. Some are state laws for registering educational institutions. Some are central laws. And at various points in time, they uh, declared that this is the nomenclature if you are not a government university. So that is why we have this deemed to be university as ever, as part of our name, which is prescribed by the University Grants Commission. <clears throat> our students, all of these young minds that you see and their predecessors have joined the best colleges internationally. Many of them have gone to the IIMs and uh, not just the newer IIMs, the topmost IIMs, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta. So sometimes a question is posed to us that are we handicapped if we study in a deemed to be university? No. In fact, now we are recognized by universities across <clears throat> as a university which offers quality education and a state-of-the-art education. So, I thought, let me just share this with you and uh, you would have some idea. Our parent institution, Sri Vileparle Kedavani Mandal, uh, all of all these young people, I, I come from a generation where I'm mocked at when I say, uh, can you get me a plate of uh, jalapenos? It is written J. And all these youngsters, no, 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 it's a jalapenos. You don't know Spanish? I'm not supposed to know Spanish. But when it comes to Sri Vile Parle Kedavani Mandal, if I ask you to repeat after me in chorus, and all of you are Indians, I can well imagine what happens to the younger generation. Why the word Kelavani? Kelavani is, if you refer to a dictionary, is a word which talks of en all encompassing development of a child or a student. There can be a Shikshak Manda, there can be an education society. But Kelavani means an all encompassing development of the child and that is what we strive to do. Our forefathers, this institution was established in the year 1934 by freedom fighters. And uh, their entire motive was that uh, <clears throat> let us, and many of them were illiterates. Illiterates in the sense they could just sign their name, they were good successful businessmen. But they thought if something has not been made available to us, we owe it to the subsequent generation that we must make it available to them. And uh, that has been the guiding philosophy now for almost, what, 90, uh, more than almost 89, 90 years. So they at that time thought that education doesn't mean just imparting academic knowledge. It should also en encompass different fields, whether it is physical, whether it is the arts, music, we try and do this, we try and afford these opportunities, but Bombay with the limitations of space and now with the number of students we have, sometimes it does become challenging. But we try and do it in different ways whereby they have various societies, they have various clubs, whether it's literary, music, organizing events and so on. So that it is not just the academic part which you are looking at, but also the flowering of the student's personality in different areas. Otherwise, we do not want either geeks, nor do we want Robinson Crusoe's. So there we are, Sri Ville Parle Kiravani Mandal, a unique institution in India, which was formed by the citizens of Ville Parle. And uh, even today, we as citizens manage this in an honorary capacity. We all have our own businesses, vocations, professions, and so on. But continuously, these citizens have strived. We started from a small Gujarati medium school and, uh, in 1934. That Gujarati medium school, later on, we, the citizens felt a need for 
colleges. So the Narsimonji College, Mithibai College, Bhagubai Mofatlal, and so on, Science, Commerce, Arts. Those colleges were established in the uh, early or middle of middle 60s. Then we realized that we needed proper degree engineering colleges, so degree engineering colleges were set up. And thereafter, we realized the need for education, which is contemporary, where a student can live in India, but still study the best. And that is when we started NMIMS. But we didn't stop at that. What we also realized is that there are so many people who come from outside Mumbai, and Mumbai is a cost. Okay. Uh, the youngsters, you are blessed that your parents are able to afford this cost, especially if you are from out of town. And therefore, we said that let us set up campuses in other parts of the country where the same quality of education is available closer to home. Sometimes parents don't send children outside because they are worried about the safety, the minds are young. Sometimes uh, it's a physical constraint, sometimes it's a financial constraint. And we thought, let us set up campuses in other parts of the country so that students can and parents can also partake of the same quality of education. So what you are going to study in Mumbai is what you are going to study in Navi Mumbai or Hyderabad or Bangalore. Everywhere it's the same. The standard of examination, the st quality of evaluation, everything is identical. So that is what I would like to impress upon you, that we have come to you why? Because we as an institutional philosophy have always believed that if we don't have something, it is the duty of that generation to ensure that the younger generation gets that. And that is how the uh, virtuous cycle of life goes on. But a couple of things. How many are from outside Mumbai? Can you please raise your hands? That's quite a lot. 75. And uh, how many of you know or have heard about our attendance? Even the parents are raising their hands. <laughs> so, let me try and get some sense out of these, all these smiling young faces who are happy to leave their parents behind. And... Uh, of course, with the uh, credit card or net banking tap turned on. So let me tell you just one thing. Uh, please attend. <laughs> and please pass. And do well. The only reason I am telling you this is, I have no, no noble intentions. It's just that, what happens is that when some of you don't attend, and you are detained, and the parents come and talk to us, and then they say, just, just those three days, and asa hua asa. Now, for us to go through that, we are parents, remember, at the end of the day, right? And uh, our thoughts at that time goes to, what would have been our situation if it was our child? Teen din ke liye, do din ke liye. Lekin koi bhi attendance standard rakhe. Even if we keep 10%, there will be a student jo ek din ke liye chhoot jayega. That is always going to be there, right? That's, that's what a benchmark is. And we get so upset. We don't show it, of course. We say, ha, ha, this, that, whatever. But we can't change rules for individuals. Otherwise, this whole structure will collapse. And we don't want you to, we don't want to fail you. We don't want to detain you. But the whole reason why we went about this attendance process is not to discipline you. That is a, those are standard terminologies. The reason we went is we did a detailed exercise uh, a few years ago. Would that have been 13, 14 years ago? Yeah, when we, and we analyzed that how are students faring, what is the personality of students, uh, why is the Delhi University or maybe some other university students doing so well in life as compared to, say, the students of Mumbai or many other places in India? And one was, of course, curriculum. So that I explained to you. 
Delhi University as a curriculum for Delhi, period. No, no rural area, all smart kids coming in and so on. So curriculum we matched. Second thing is, we thought is that teaching quality, teaching quality is the same. We also have very good, committed, dedicated, qualified, intelligent teachers. Students, same. We also have 90 percenters here. They also have 90 percenters there. Now, between a 90 percent and a 92 percenter, in a way, there is not much of a difference. It's probably whether you stayed up a little late that last night when you had the day, night before the exam. So, student quality. Everything was the same. What we realized is that in Mumbai, slowly, the culture of attendance had gone down. Now, as a result of that, the peer learning was not happening. Students were not sitting in class. Students were not participating uh, in discussions with the faculty. They were not learning from questions or doubts which were posed by somebody else. They were not coming to class. They were busy doing internship. They were busy fooling around. They were doing whatever. So we said, let them come back to class. They are sitting with 90 percenters. They will all learn from each other. Uh, they will maybe fight with each other, but also they will learn to collaborate with each other. And that is when we decided that not just our academic processes, but even the kind of evaluation mechanisms, mechanisms where you have projects and so on and so forth, they should also have an element of collaborative teaching. So that is when we said they must come to class. This is the reason. Otherwise, you will have half a dozen friends which you made in the first year. You will enjoy with them maybe 10 friends, but there is a whole mass of intelligent students who are there with you. And if you engage with them, believe me, not now, 20 years down the line, you will realize the difference. You can just walk up. And we have a student in every city of the USA, in UK. An SVKM student is present everywhere. We are a large institution. And then once you grow, you know people, you meet people across schools, because of your various fests, interactions, etc. It makes a big difference to your personality. And mind my words, after 20 years, okay, when, uh, sorry, no, 20, no, maybe 30 years, no, uh, 30 years, 25, 30 years down the line, when you come with your kids and you are sitting here with white hair. I'll still be around. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, I wish you all the best, uh, parents, as well as, and be proud of your parents and be very, very grateful. That is a very, very Indian uh, trait where gratitude uh, is a very important aspect of our culture and our life and it, it should begin with your own parents. Uh, but I wish you all the best, uh, all of you, especially those sitting in the aisle. Dr. Met in a lighter vein, Dr. Mehta said, when the hall is filled, what do you think? And I thought, we have a small hall. That's the problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Our respected dean, Professor Sangeeta Kher, has been associated with SVKM for more than 40 years. She was head of the Department of Commerce, vice principal and principal of NM College of Commerce and Economics, which is affiliated with the University of Mumbai. With her expertise in the field of teaching and administration, she has played a pivotal role in the smooth functioning and speedy development of this school, which she took over in 2011. She has spearheaded our undergraduate and postgraduate programs and continues to inspire us with her wealth of experience. Ma'am, we request you to address the students. Hello. Good morning. Nice to see a full auditorium. As our mentor said, the auditorium is small, so we have the full, we can feel it full. It is not true. Auditorium is not that small. It has a capacity of 750 plus the aisles. And I, so I was telling him, you are demeaning my auditorium. So that's how it is. 
First thing I want to congratulate every child of mine. I never call my students a student. I don't know why. I feel they are my children. They are my kids. So I want to congratulate every child of mine sitting in this auditorium and across campuses where this has been. Uh, we are going with webcast and I want to congratulate them because they could make it at NMRS School of Commerce. I want to really, I really want to pat the back of my kids. I can't come personally to each one of you. You pat your own back because you could make it. I'm sure 90% of you must have had an MMS as the first choice. You all agree? How many of you say that this was the last choice? We had no choice, so we came here. How many of you raise your hands? I'm sure not a single hand will go up because an MMS has become a place to study, a place of choice, because I go take you through the whole thing. After one hour, you'll say, yes, ma'am, this is why we thought of joining NMRS. Most of them have, earlier speakers have spoken to you about uh, NMRS, uh, School of Commerce being this and that. I don't want to say anything. I always keep saying, India today, what they say, let them say. Let education time say you are the best. But tomorrow I want my parents sitting here, my children's parents sitting here saying, ma'am, it was the best education that you delivered. I want the corporates to tell us what type of people you have produced here in your school. And we are so happy to hire them. When they acknowledge my education, which we deliver here, then I can say that I have done a wonderful job here. We have done a wonderful job here. Because ultimately, each one of my child goes into the corporate world or may enter the, his own business world where they will be proving themselves and saying that this education is making a difference in their life. So that being the case, what people talk about, of course, we do claim that India today said this and Outlook said that. Fine, they're all there because these are a part of our journey in the education world. But I look at when corporate who come to recruit my kids, they say, ma'am, we are so happy. We could have, there were 12 shortlisted. We wanted to hire all of them, but we had only five places. So I say, that's fine. But my, they are, they are really deserving candidate. Big companies like Ernst & Young, JP Morgan, D. Shaw, name a company, they are there, including Goldman Sachs. So I can say that my children, my school has become getting popular even in the corporate world. And I want more and more undergrad children to be hired by the corporate. Most of my kids don't want to go to take up a job. They want to, what you say, go abroad, study, or study here in India, in IAMS, and most of the management schools. Because of that, we don't have a huge placement. But those who want to be placed, we do place them. I take you through all those things I mean, a little while uh, later. But one thing I want to say that I want each one of you now, including the parents, to pay a little more attention to what I'm talking about because that will make a lot of sense for you in the next three years of your journey. So I always say, your journey has begun. The moment you make it at School of Commerce, you say, chalo, kaam ho gaya. Admission to ho gayi. Admission hui just, your journey has begun. You are not reached the destination. You, are, you agree? So journey has begun, and journey is not very smooth sailing. It's a roller coaster right here, because you had to prove yourself every time. And I'm sure you have immense potential, which you don't tap. My kids have immense potential. They, are, they don't tap it because they are so busy in what? Facebook, Insta. All other social medias plus a lot of gaming, they do. And I call them as a 3 a.m. generation. They come and sleep there. And if I take a round, I say, wake up. I have not opened a dormitory here to make you sleep. I'm very clear. My kids should follow certain discipline. I'm sure most of the parents will agree with me. Most of the kids don't sleep early in the morning, early in the night. For them, the night begins when the day starts. 90% of the people's children go to bed at 2.33 because their eyes cannot remain open. 
eyes are so overstrained so they starts closing and they say chalo sometimes ac on tv on everything on and they are off and i don't want my kids to do that start disciplining yourself see up to 12 you are in a shell you are controlled monitored but once you come to what you say higher education you feel i have all the freedom in my world freedom is good parents cannot monitor you because you say mama i'm going to college look i'm already ready but you are still in the bed she will wake you up at 7 you say almost ready just i'll be leaving now and you are not there at 7:30 lectures usually first year i don't keep 7:30 i keep lectures at 12:30 because most of you as hands up went up are out not from mumbai they are out of mumbai from outside places you are come and you find it difficult during the rainy season to wake up at 7:30 and come you have to get have what to say used to the mumbai rain you have to get used to mumbai traffic so i always keep the first year at 12:30 so even at 12:30 children make it very they find it very difficult because they sleep at 3:34 so 12:30 is too early to raise then i should start thinking let me have a school as night school 6 o'clock so that being the case first thing to remember is discipline yourself very very important see life is if it is not discipline it goes haywire so my kids have to register in their psyche mom has said whatever i say now it should keep ringing in your eyes lingering in your ears saying that no mom has said we have to sleep early switch off everything off at 11 bed time and you should be in the bed at 11 i'm sure my kids will promise me will you all promise me that sure my boys and girls are here i want that i do not want to see you not being or uh, up in the bed till what do you say 3 o'clock and hum to bolte ullu jagte hai mere bachche ullu nahi hai correct you know who stays awake in the night ullu and all of the birds starts chirping and waking up by 3:34 i'm think you may have you have never seen the sun raising you have never seen the bird chirping so you have to see that also nature is so beautiful okay coming to they have made a slide i am i just go have i so i will follow a bit of it as you know it is 16 year old school we started in 2007 and i'm i'm heading the school from 2011 and uh, from that period i can say my school is 12 year old for me otherwise it is 16 year old so as you know we major objective as dr mr shalin devetia our mentor was saying we wanted to start the school as there are many schools across or to say mumbai imparting bms bba and all but one benefit that we had was being an deemed university and a freedom to design our syllabus design our curriculum freedom to keep monitoring it keep changing it continuously that made our school a different school compared to all other schools so i'm sure most of you sitting here may be good in finance marketing and all those domains the parents i'm talking you can just go through our curriculum and i'm sure you will come and say ma'am curriculum is good and if you have any what do you say suggestions we are always open to suggestions which we'll try to implement also so that being the case we have as i told you a world class curriculum the curriculum is the best and many people from abroad also have vouched it saying that your curriculum is best take the next slide bhavesh so when we no no wait i will not in linkedin okay fine okay so i was telling you it is ranked best agency i'm not bothered about all the agency what they talk that's fine and uh, this is something about it we go a little ahead as i was talking everything in our school is student centric we are there because you are there Stud- totally student centric in the sense everything that we do all activities that we conduct 
the curriculum that we deliver is the best for each one of you sitting here and my kids sitting across campuses. Mainly because up to 12th, whatever you study is two things that you do is understand and remember. Or remember and understand. See, there's something known as Bloom's taxonomy. He brought about what are the levels of education, how you study and how you acquire your education. According to Bloom's taxonomy, the first two levels of is remembering and understanding, which you did till 12th. But once you start going to a higher education, that is your undergrad education, you will not just remember and understand. This is necessary, but you go to a higher level. What is that higher level? Higher level we call it as hot. What is hot? High order thinking, high order learning. Basically, you will be thinking in terms of analysis. You will think in terms of application. You will think in terms of comparing, comparing comparative studies. You will think in terms of, what you say, creating. So these are the high level thinking. Just you remember something and incorporate that in your answer book is not all I expect. I expect my child to interpret the data. I expect my child to analyze it. I expect him to compare one data with another and deduce certain conclusion. I want him to be more creative. These are the high order learning which we look at. And that is what you'll be doing in, what do you say, School of Commerce. First year, you may feel that, ma'am, subjects we have studied, but you'll see that what you studied, you'll be, study, you'll be studying same in a very different manner, all in terms of application, all in terms of what you say, analysis. That is what is required now. See, I was just reading something yesterday. Elon Musk, you must have heard a Tesla head. He has come out with XAI, artificial intelligence. He calls it a, just like a chat GPT, XAI. And he has claimed in that within five years, it will see that human intelligence will go away and only artificial intelligence will prevail. Of course, you know Musk has his own way of putting things. He is too egoistic according to me. And, he, and I said, let him talk whatever he want. He can, artificial intelligence can never ever replace the human intelligence. We are always ahead of whatever the intelligence they get, because human brain cannot be replicated by artificial intelligence. And that is what I want my children to do. My children should be thinking, my children should be looking at things in a more different manner than the regular things which are there in the textbook. Textbooks and the teacher give you a lot, but I want that inquisitive mind, that creative mind to think more and do better. You all agree with me? I want that to happen. So that's one important thing I look at whenever you talk about, what do you say, our student-centric learning. Here, everything we measure in terms of what we call as outcome, learning outcome. What is that you have learned? I, I go to class. When I go, I visit every class. I may not teach everyone, but when I go to class, I ask the kids, what is the value addition that took place? Every day when you sit in a class, you should say that I learned something new. I got something better. I became a better person. And that is what is important. Learning outcome. And your parents should say every year after the year is over, my child has become much more brighter. My child is different now, intellectually, morally, behavior wise, everything. So that is what I want. That they are the measuring sticks, yardstick that we measure. And I want everything will be measured here. Your behavior, your learning, the program outcome, everything is in terms of outcome. So that's another thing that we have to remember. Along with that, that we had to remember certain things in ASMSOC. I come to the next slide. Is it being projected over there? OK. See, few things that we have to remember now. One is the student portal. We call that learning 
that basically uh, where you get a lot of information in the portal. Because technology we use extensively in uh, NMMS, the student portal, learning management system, LMS we call, it gives you what? One, it gives your attendance on a daily basis. Parents can also find out what's your child's attendance. Beside that, every Monday and every Thursday, we send a mail to parents saying that this is your child's attendance. I'll come to attendance later. Second thing is the portal gives you the timetable, your uh, assignments you can upload in the portal. It gives you marks, internal marks, how much you have scored. It also gives you a term and marks. So portal is handy for you. It's an information, uh, what to say, giving portal, which gives you a lot of information. And you also can upload a lot of things on that, depending on what the faculty asks for. This student portal, you have what we call as username. Username is your SAP ID. And a password, by default it sets, but you can change the password and you can use that. So. Username will be your SAP ID, which is 11-digit ID, SAP ID, plus you have what we call as password, which you can change. And my humble request to each one of the child sitting here to give the password to your parents, because parents have to have an access to the portal. They know the SAP ID, but they will not be knowing your password because you have the right to change the password. You can change whenever you want. If you do, your dad should not so you see your internal marks, change the password and say that, Dad, I forgot the password even. I'm not accessing the portal. No. I want every parent to know what is the child's, what is this, portal's password so that you can access the portal anytime and see the result, see the assignment, see the internal marks, see the timetable. That's a... A regular timetable plus the exam timetable. The portal is a way through which we communicate with the students. This is about the NMIMS student portal. And I request every parent to have an access to the portal in between once in a uh, fortnight or once in a week on a Sunday, you just access the portal and see what your child is doing as such. So it is not for monitoring purpose. It is for the information purpose. So this is something which you get on the portal. So now coming to various things, we talk about attendance. What is this attendance? Even Shalin sir was saying that attendance is important, blah, blah. See, I always feel attendance is mainly because if you're physically present in a class, some learning happens. Faculty is teaching, peer learning, discussion in the class with your friends. And this is very important for your healthy growth. We have peer learning, we have, what do you say, the group learning, group le groups we make as per the serial number or as per the roll number, 1 to 5, 6 to 10. Children come and tell, ma'am, I don't want to be in this group. One, my group people doesn't work. I say you have to because you have no choice. What happens when you take up a job, you have no choice. You cannot go to your boss and say, mere saath jo jo hai unko nikal do. I cannot work with them. Does it happen in our life? No. Nothing we get in our life of our choice. And you have a peer group, where your buddy group we can call. You can have a buddy group for certain things. You, have, you will have a, what we call as a group which is assigned by the school as per your, what you call as roll number, which is a group where you have to work. If at all assignment is there, it's a group assignment. If, because we always believe in collaboration. That is very important. You have to collaborate and work. You have to work in group. You have to, that's a leadership quality also emerges there. If at all somebody is not working, you have to make him work or make her work. That's very important. So there is a collaboration where you do things together that's very important. Because this world, you cannot say, I will walk alone, let the whole world go to hell. No, you have to walk with others. You have to learn work with others. So that being the case, that is very important. You have to have what we call as uh, uh, at coming to attendance. It's a 100% given a choice. You'll get a shock. Ma'am, what does this 100% kaise koi rak sakta hai? I can understand. So we have mellowed down to 80%. You had to maintain an 80% attendance. Given a choice, 100%. But 80% is compulsory. 
Why 80%? This 20% leeway we have given so that a child has something at, in their family or he or she falls sick, then you, you can take. And remember, we have 60 hours per course. 60 hours in that 20% comes to 12 lectures. That means maximum you can miss out is 12 lectures per course. And there are six courses. That means you can miss out 72 hours. You can imagine 72 hours of learning missed out. You say, ma'am, I learn on my own. Don't worry. You can learn on your own. I know. But not that learning happens when you learn from your teacher. Not that learning happens when you sit in a class and in a group you learn. That is very important. So make it a habit to be regular. In between you fall sick. We are there to take care of. As I told you, you are not my student. You are my kids. You are my children. I play a parental role here. All my faculty play a parental role. We do take care of you. But at the end of the day, you cannot give lame excuses. You could not get up at 12.30. So you come and say, I was sick. So ma'am, I could not come. My attendance default. No. You had to come on time. And that's very important. I'm sure my kids will maintain, my children will maintain an attendance of 80 per and above. You all promise me? This is very important. Note down in your... If you have a diary, note down or note down here. 80% and above attendance. The moment, take six courses name. Every course you miss out one or two, put a cross there. And the moment it goes to eight or nine missed out, stop there. Say no, I should not miss out anymore. So that should be the case. Next comes, why are you messing up? Okay, next is after attendance, I take a passing criteria. Attendance rule you are aware now, correct? You have to have minimum 80%. Less than 80%, then we will be attending to you personally, what happened, what went wrong, why you did this, and a lot of inquiry comes on you. And please do not make us do that. Then coming to the passing criteria. See, one thing this is very, very important. What happens in case of uh, your passing? You have 50 marks to pass. You should take 50 marks in total. Every course you should score 50 and above. Of course, there are, when you go to SRB, I will be talking about SRB. When, I, when children come to my class also, I'll be talking to them personally. So SRB student resource book, it gives you all detail. That will be uploaded somewhere in the first week of August. The SRB gets uploaded because your portal takes some time to become functional and uh, register all your SAP IDs and all. So we upload the SRB on portal. And you have to know there are certain rules laid down in the SRB. The first thing is it also talks about how to calculate your CGPA. How to calculate your GPA? First semester, it will be GPA. Later on, CGP, cumulative grade, average points that you have. And every semester, you have 24 credit you earn. So when you complete BBA, you will have earned 143 credits. And that is how the program is scheduled or designed. So these credit transfer also happens. If at all you go abroad, you can transfer these credits. But complete a semester full here, then only you can go abroad. Then the credit transfer can also take place. So when we talk of your studies, there is two components. One is internal assessment and other is term and test. Out of 100 marks, 50 is internal, 50 is term and. This 50 internal, how it happens? We call it as ICA. What is ICA? Internal Continuous Assessment. You'll be continuously assessed and evaluated to see how much you scored in every, uh, what you say, uh, we can call it as module. If there are 10 modules in a subject, take for example microeconomics. You have 10 modules, say. Every two, three modules completed, a test will be there, an assignment will be there, a quiz will be there. So we evaluate you on something. And totally it is for 50. We never have 50 marks at once, no. 10, 10, 10, and there's a term and test of 20 marks. So always tell the kids, I see it like a piggy bank. You say something from your pocket money, you put it in piggy bank. Just like that, I see it like a piggy bank. First test is done, you scored 7 marks, so it is deposited there. Second test, you got only 5. 7 plus 5, 12. 
So it goes on cumulatively getting added. So at the end of the term, that is when the semester ends, you will get to know how much you have scored from all the components or all the ICA components which were there, maybe three or maybe four, and the total marks is made known to you. It is put again on the portal, which I talked about. And in that portal, we keep the portal open for three days for the students and the parents to say, ma'am, the portal we have gone through, my marks are right. There, sometimes there may be a typographic error. Some has gone, got 32, it has been typed at 23. Can happen. So if such issues come up, you should raise it to our attention. We immediately correct it. We check it and correct it. So once the portal, we seal the portal, seal the ICA, nothing can be done. I'm very clear, I repeat. Before the examination, that the term and examination, now we say from 20th, the lecture begins, 20th of July. And by December, your exams will start, the term and exam. Next three to four months, you'll have continuous assessment. That is the internal. For 50 marks, you're assessed. Then the other 50 marks is a two-hour examination at the end of the semester. So whenever you pass, it is internal plus term end, your result will be declared. There's no minimum for internal. Some children get eight or 10, still they are allowed to appear for the term end examination. But when you get eight or 10 there, getting 40 out of 50 becomes very difficult. So therefore, you should keep scoring continuously in internal assessment. Do not be complacent. Do not say that I was sick, this happened, that happened. Therefore, it becomes very difficult for you to score in that 50 marks of internal. See to it that whenever the internal is announced, you are there, you give the internal and earn good marks. Marks are earned by you, not given by faculty. Every mark that you get is your effort, your knowledge. You have earned the marks. So that being the case, internal is 50, term end is 50. And for term end, there is minimum. What is that minimum? 20. 40% of 50 marks comes to 20. You have to get minimum of 20. Suppose in internal you have 35 and you get 15 or 16 in term end. 35 plus 16 becomes 51, but still you are declared fail because the in term end marks are minimum 20. You should get minimum 20. If you don't get minimum 20, you may have 50 on 15 internal, but still you are declared fail because you fail to get that eligibility marks of 20. That's must remember. Register this in your psyche. I want parents also to remember this. Because later on, you run from pillar to post saying that, how can my child fail? He was a 90% student in 10th and 12th. I tell you, scoring 90% or 95% or even 100% in 10th and 12th is easy because it's all rote learning. Year after year, same question asked, and children know expected questions, so they pass with high mark percentage. But here, you realize that getting even that bare 50% becomes difficult because everything is, is in terms of eval what you say, analysis, application, understanding and doing a comparative study. So that being the case, you have to be on your toes. That's very important. Getting an admission is easy, but sailing through three years will be equally difficult. So remember that you have to pull up your socks and say, a serious business of education has started now. You all agree with me? Parents are worried? Don't worry, we are there to take care of our kids. We keep monitoring, we keep taking care of them. They're all my children. Once you leave them here, they become my children, I take care of them. But at the end of the day, you must be aware of it. There are many parents who come and say, Ma'am, my child was 95% to in the 12th grade. How can it be a fail? Are madam, fail is because mothers are more, what you say, emotional. Whenever they come, they start saying, my child is so intelligent, you failed him. Believe me, I don't fail anyone. You fail or you pass. You get high grades. And my job is to only teach you, conduct the test, conduct the exam, declare the result. Correct? So that being the case, nobody ever should come to the school office and blame me or my faculty saying that you people failed us. We don't fail anyone. We want our kids to pass. We want our kids to score good marks. 
but only thing is once they come here for higher education they feel everything is simple are 50 mein to aaram se mil jayega 30 by 30 aur 50 mein mil jayega 30 by 30 usme kya hai no no chill no cool your all languages your whatever you use it is not that easy man you realize yes it is very difficult here we have to learn we have to apply we have to and it's that is what is required here so this is one thing how the we have project presentation quiz this is how the internal and term end is separated next thing is we don't have etiquetting remember this clearly you have two exams in a semester one is term end examination we call it as tee -E, term end examination that will be in the month of december somewhere for you after the term end results are declared you have a choice to you are not happy with the marks marks you got you can apply for evaluation and the revaluation results if you pass fine if you don't pass whatever the result you get you have to accept and exam is not conducted determined by me it is conducted by the university control of examinations office so that being the case they conduct one exam in december after your results are declared those who fail they have one more chance we call it as reexam somewhere in the month of february for the semester 1 and in the re exam if you don't pass please hear this very carefully in the re exam if you don't pass then you will have a year back am i making it clear you will have a year back that is you have to clear that you cannot go to next year with an f that is fail every year you have to clear all the 12 courses and go to the second year from second year to third year clear everything go to third year and we don't have gracing rule also but we have another rule what is the another rule we have two d's what is d d is 40 to 49 if you score anything remember scoring means it's always a combination of term end and ica ica plus term end is added and your result is declared and if you get less than 50 that is 49 to 40 40 to 49 you are declared as the grade is d grade the d grade means we call it as low pass what is the passing criteria here 50 if you get less than 50 and more than 40 you are put under d then the question is ma'am ma mujhe 6 d mil sakta hai nahi you can have maximum 2 d in what in a year in a year that means in the same one you got 2 d in sem 2 you cannot take any d you should have all above c minus that is above 50 c minus is 55 to 50 c minus then c then c plus b minus b b plus that's the they are all the what we call as letter grades so 85 and above is a plus so you will see that in srb there all these things you have to re realize and remember that if at all i get any d in sem 1 i should be doubly careful not to get any d in sem 2 am i making sense and if at all you get more than 2d again a year back so remember that you will lose an year if at all you have more than 2d or you have any f am i clear on this yes so what is your responsibility now not to get even d so dish is not acceptable i i used to always say people used to come and say ask ma'am gracing nahi karte aap aap log 38 aaya mere bachcho ko grace nahi kar mai bolti tu grace nahi sir oh disgrace hai it is not grace it is disgrace what is this gracing business we stopped it long back see when we have a something known as academic council which is the highest body of academics where there are people from outside that is there is indian institute of science person is there i am bangalore person is there industry persons are there they have an academic body who who meet here once in two to three months they decide certain things we had this gracing rule in some, somewhere in 20, 2012 and 13 they started saying you people call yourself as a global standard university you have gracing rules i used to always say grace is a disgrace we should not have but they also supported that idea then we came out with this d because students cry 50 se kam aa gaya aapne fail kar diya so we thought gracing ke badle d grade rakhenge so 2d you can have maximum 2d 
Am I making sense to my kids and their parents? Yes. So you cannot have more than 2D and no F if you want to promote to the second year. And I'm sure you are all smart kids. You know how to study. And I'm always there. My faculty is always there. Class mentors are always there to help you. And if any child feels after first or second, what do you say, ICA, he is not able to cope with, immediately go to the faculty. Ask them, sir, how to, how to handle this? Why I'm getting low marks in internal? Where I'm failing? You, there are people to guide you. But only thing is, you should approach them. I always say, aap bimar ho gaye to doctor aapke ghar ne aega, aap doctor ke paas jana padta hai. You all agree with me? So, aapko doctor ke paas jana padega. Because you have a problem, you have to go to the faculty, you have to come to me. And believe me, Dean is easily accessible to you. I never ever say I will not meet any parent, I will not meet any child. If he or she wants to meet me, I am always there. But one request for the parent is, do not come and meet me when the child fails. Meet me even before, to know the progress of the child, if at all you want to meet us. It's always better to keep a track of what the child is doing. Not that, chalo, NMM is dal diya hai, chhe, chhe mene ke baad, dekhenge, paas hua, fail hua, fail hone ke baad. Aane se, nothing can be done much. Because everything should be preventive, no corrective. You all agree? We have to take a preventive action. If child is not performing well, and find out from the child, what's his internal marks, how much he has scored. If he doesn't tell you, many a time children give wrong answers, give fake answers to the parents saying, acha kar rahe daddy mai, bahut acha kar raha hu. And if you feel that he is not telling you the truth, approach us. We, even a phone call will do. We want to know the internal marks of my child, this is his SAP ID or the, even SAP ID don't remember, tell us this is his name and division. We will find out the internal and tell you, sir, this is what he has scored, this is what is his attendant. We are there always at your phone call. Whenever you call us, we are able to answer your phone. Am I, are you okay with this? Shall I go ahead now? So this is about the passing criteria. No more, two, more than 2D, you will be fa fail or even F, you cannot carry and go to the second year. There will be a year back. So I don't want my child to have a year back because I can understand losing a year is too much for them at that young age and they have a lot of stress and tension, this and that. Parents come and say, ma'am, oh, depression mein ja raha hai. So a little bit of emotional blackmailing also they do with us. But we cannot do much. As uh, Shalin sir was saying, we cannot change the processes and systems for the sake of one or two kids as such. So that being the case, please pay attention. That's very important for. This is something about your term and marks. What are the discipline norms? Do's and don'ts now. One thing is, no cell phone in the classroom. No cell phone, I doesn't mean deposit with me, no. Carry with you. It should be in a power off mode. Parents should know the timetable of the child and between 12.30 to 5.30, you should not call the child. If there is any emergency you want to communicate to the child, call on our landline. We will call the child and inform. Because if we allow one child to see that phone is on a switch on mode, everyone will have. And every now and then it vibrates and they want to see what is there, kiss comes, as if they are all VVVIP category people. Modi ji ne call kiya kya humko? Are koi ne call karte aapko? Chup baito. No, as if they are the VIP category. Put your cell phone, not even on flight mode, but on a power off mode. Power off. Class enter hote hi power off ho gaya. You all understand power off, correct? Then after you get out of the class, switch on and see you will feel so nice. So dhada 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 message again. And you will feel that so happy. My, my goodness, so many messages I got in, in a second or a minute. Okay, do that. So it is what power off. Next, there is no tuition culture here. Anybody who go to tuition class, I will be the first to take you to task and remove you from my school. I don't want you to go for tuitions. You have paid enough fee. 
don't empty your dad's pocket or mom's pocket further for tuitions. I am requesting the parents, if at all a child asks, sir, um, dad, I want to go for tuition, mom, I want to go for tuition, totally discourage him. Call me and we will tell him which faculty to meet, from whom to learn what. We are there to teach them. Personally, we will take care. No tuition culture is to be entertained. I am fed up of tuition culture. Aajkal to bachcha born hua, tuition class or kya nursery kaha jalna hai dekhte. Stop that. Tuition culture we don't want. When we can teach your kids better in the class and more than what happens, we teach in a different manner. Tuition classes teach in different manner. Child will further fail. Because we want everything in application form. We want everything in analysis form. The teacher will just teach basics. That I don't want. And whenever the child feels, and there are few more children, 10 to 12, 15, does not understand, will conduct a lect bridge lecture also. That is another thing that you have to remember. No tuition. Dress code. I think my students were speaking, also spoke about the dress code. My associate dean, Dr. Minu, also talk, uh, spoke about dress code. Why the dress code? See, I have no objection in your modern dresses which you wear, skimpy dresses which you wear, torn jeans which you wear, what they call as uh, distress jean or whatever the name that they give, uh, ripped jeans and all. I have no, no issue with that. But the problem is, in our school, there are a lot of people who come for guest lecture. Recruiters come. When the recruiters see a school, school of commerce, which I say, I say, dress kar hai. See, corporate culture you have to maintain. You cannot go to corporate with ripped jeans, correct? Can you go like that? Torn jeans or torn dresses. No. You have to be decently dressed. I don't say wear sari like me for girls or boys. But basically, basically, you have to be presentable. There are male teachers, female teachers teaching you. They should not feel awkward to look at my kids. You all agree, parents? I want your children to be decently dressed. Decency, you understand. I did not define the de word decency. But given a choice, what they do? Crop top. Literally, barely they have covered their body. They have to take a, what do you say, jacket on that. Mumbai climate, mein jacket kaun pahinta hai? Koi nahi. Just to show Dean, ma'am, ma'am, I'm wearing good clothes. Upar jacket, Dean, ma'am, gai to jacket out. Why? I don't want, the moment I see the jacket, I will, I will see to it that the jacket will vanish. I don't want that. Mumbai climate, 12, all the 12 months, it's, what do you say, moderate. And winter also, it is not very cold. If at all you feel very cold, come with a shawl, wrap yourself and sit in the class. Because we have air conditioned, which are centrally air conditioned, so that may, many a time you may not be able to monitor them. So, I want my kids to dress properly because tomorrow corporate should not say, Kaise bachche hai aapke aise dress karke aayenge? I don't want to hear that. You all agree with me? My kids and their parents, yes, I want to hear a big yes. Yes, yes that's it. So that's about it. See, very often when the new students come, start coming to campus, there are outside agency who conduct a fresher party. And they charge around 1800 2,000, 2,200 and they take a villa somewhere in Juhu or somewhere in Bandra and they assemble all the newcomers of the, uni not only Mumbai University, not only NMIMS, but across colleges. Because it's a money-making proposition for the person who conduct that. And he will sell the ticket center. off. And one thing I want to tell my kids, I'm not against partying. Mumbai city is called as a financial capital, party capital and all. Give any adjective to Mumbai, it goes with it. Because it's a party capital. It's a finance capital. But I have no objection with partying. But this type of party, absolutely objectionable. Why? You are totally new to Mumbai. They lure you. And many a time, drugs enter there. Drinks enter there. You are all uh, around 17, 18. You are not supposed to drink. You are not supposed to. And there are whistleblowers we call. Nowadays, police take the cognizance of such things through whistleblowers also. If somebody tells the police, yeah, yeah, party ho rahi hai, yeh chal raha hai yaha, daru pee rahe hai, drugs le rahe hai, chapa pad gaya. And police will round up some kids, take them to police station. 
and I don't want my child to enter into any such hassle. So remember parents, no fresher party money for the kid. He or she will not go for fresher party. I'm very clear about it. And these fresher parties have landed kids earlier in lot trouble. So I thought this should be announced in the orientation that no child goes for fresher party. Next thing is too much of EVAPs, smoking, especially in the what do you say, lavatories and the washrooms and restrooms, whatever you name you give. And a lot of things I have caught, I can say, I must have destroyed around 70 to 80 EVAPs. And they are a one time usable, I never knew that. They fill it for 1200, 1300, 1800, used and you have to throw it. And it's the e waste which has to be disposed of clearly. If at all you are caught, you'll be suspended. For three days, you lose the school for a, you go for a toss, and second time it happens, you'll be out of my school. Nobody will smoke. Say no for the first time, say no every time. You have won the game. Suppose anybody smoking? If anybody is smoking, he passes it on to, nah, yaar, mujhe nahi karna hai. Once, ten, ten times, hundred times, he'll say, Arre, yaar, usko mat de na, wo kabhi har baar bolta hai na, tum kyu bol? Hota hai ya nahi? Itna guts chahiye bachche mein ki na means na. Hold on to your na. No for evap, no for drinks. Many parents also support, no ma'am, social drinking. Cup social, there is no Lakshman Rekha. A social drinking hai, a drinking hai. Nahi. Or Lakshman Rekha all the time gets crossed. Children drink and come to class once or twice. And I have chucked them out and chucked them out of my school. Believe me, this is intolerable. So say no every time to drinks. And at, if at all you are drinking, you are drinking at your dad's cost, mom's cost. Why a dent to their pocket? Once they may feed you, give you free of cost. Second time you have to give a party. At that time it will be a big dent to your pocket. Why? Say no every time. Any drink, maybe even order beer, no, I don't drink. No alcohol, no every time. As I told you, no first time, no every time. Drugs, though, no, 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 forever in your life. Drinks, I don't know, once you become raised up in a corporate world, if you remember me, Hey, our day was a day, no, late, you didn't do this, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. I say, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. But when you have me, you have to go to the shikar. So there is no for these, all these things. Along with that, no to all these games which you have. I have no idea whether parents have some idea about these, what we call as uh, video games. It is so addictive, you can't imagine. I tell my children, you don't have to go to your dad. Smartphone operate करने के लिए उनको सिखा दो एक हाथा game he'll be twenty four by seven on that दादी डंडा लेके आपके पीछे आएगी क्या सिखा दिया आपके दादा को मुझसे बात भी नहीं करते आजकल all the time maybe Candy Crush maybe I don't even know their names so you just teach them at any age they can get addictive any age maybe at seventy seventy five eighty also it's very very addictive and I have seen children not coming to school on time because of these video games. I go to campuses across, I visit their hostel. You may not believe they don't wash their clothes, they sit on that mountain of unwashed clothes. I saw console TV And all of a sudden, a surprise visit by Dean. Immediately they start hiding everything, putting their clothes under the sofa or under the bed, then shutting it down. I said, no, nothing doing. They will be, their eyes will be red. And they are playing all the time. Do not indulge in these things. They, those who make these games make money at your cost. And you spoil your career at their cost. Is it worth it? I don't say don't play. Play for an hour. Two. It's fine. But when to say stop, you should know. Stopping is no important. Putting, what you say, breaks in your life is very important. When to do, what to do, you should know. And you're all smart kids. You know what is to be done, but given a choice, don't do this. I have seen children losing years because of video games. Parents coming and crying like a small child in front of me. Because the child don't come to college, class, school, 
he was playing whole day and parents are in the opinion bachcha ja raha hai class nahi aa raha hai do do teen teen mahina nahi aaya then when we send a mail to them saying that your child has a very bad attendance then they wake up and start running and we have to tell them when we ask the child he say ma'am i used to play at that time it was pubg or something then fortnite and other what all games and they would lose a year because of that i think it is not worth losing a year you all agree with me every child sitting here and the parent should support to me because i always feel unless you support me i cannot discipline my kids i want a full support from my parent my students parents so this something about it and those students who are from a science background there are quite a few students who have joined i have uh, the data around two division around 130 students from science and around 30 to 40 from what do you say uh, arts background they have, we conduct a bridge lecture on 17th 18th and 19th in the morning at 9:30 to 1:30 four hours of bridge lecture with a half an hour 45 minutes gap you have to attend those lecture from 17th morning we'll put we'll put a time table for you it will be in this front building mithi bai college seventh floor because we'll be shifting to the new building you might have gone to the new building and seen the building we'll be shifting there from 20th so these three days 17 18 19 you should attend accountancy accounting and financial accounting lectures because if you know what is debit what is credit what is trial balance what are journal entries how the ledger posting is done all these things if you learn in these three days when the lecture starts you will be more comfortable nothing is greek and latin to you all my science children who are there should take the note of this that you have to attend the bridge lecture for financial accounting from 17th am i clear and we will be giving you a booklet of 20 18 to 20 pages where everything is written in a very simple word so go through that three days you have a preparation time so that tomorrow you should not feel when you when the lecture begins you will not say ma'am i'm not understanding accounting it's very difficult no you can, being a commerce students you cannot be away from finance and accounting you should learn so this something about the bridge lecture 17th 18th uh, and 19th as such so you got what are the dons what you should not do now i come to pani de mala See, I have to start winding up. I'll take a quick uh, another ten minutes because already the crowd is building out. See, undergrad education is a holistic education. It is not just academics and academics and academics. You have lot of associations here, around eleven to twelve association. Become a part of the association. Of course, if you are willing to become a part, no compulsion. But when you become a part of association, lot of things you learn. What do you learn? lot of skills i call these associations not for fun and frolic it is meant for skill development lot of skills get developed a child who is not able not able to talk start speaking so fluently in front of a crowd of 10 20 30 people they are the his volunteer the committee member the so you learn communication skill you learn collaborative skill you learn leadership skill lot of skill development activity happens in this association other than what is happening in the class class also helps you to develop these skills but along with that you learn a lot among your what is a peer group among your buddy groups and that is a lot of learning and lot of education happens even in the association activity remember that become a part of some of the association all these things are listed out there is a negotiation skills children bring lot of sponsorship money i'm sure you all agree no company will give 5 to 6 lakh as sponsor money unless you negotiate with them unless you pitch your a uh, festival to them unless you pitch your uh, what to say activity before them so all these things which you develop is a part of your holistic learning once you go to mba 
these things become secondary. Everyone asks, why do, why do you want to go to IIMs? Ma'am, placement. Once you complete undergrad, PG is all about placement. You always concentrate on placement. And real development happens in these three years. I should see my child who enters the, what is it, 13th standard or first year BBA. When I graduate him after three years, I should be proud, what is say, dean, and you should be pr proud parents. You'll be making your parents proud, yourself proud as such. This is association activity. You have to take it. Those who want, as I told you, no compulsion. Don't be under impression. I'm compelling you. But given a choice, be a part of it. You, if you don't feel, you can exit anytime. So there's something about the association activities that you have to take care of. So coming to the internship, there are two internships that you have to complete in these three years. First year end, that is 24, you have to do an internship with NGO. That will be a 15-day internship that is three weeks, five days a week, five three are 15, three weeks, 15 days, and it should be with the old age home, or it may be with the orphanage, or it may be a hospital, or it may be any NGO where you are come in touch with the less privileged people and you are able to teach them, make them understand, because you are all very blessed. Thank your parents every day. As uh, Shalin sir was saying, only thing, the attitude should be only of gratitude. That's what I say. The first thing is, thank your parents every day. They made a good choice for you. You have been put in a very wonderful institution. Later on, thank the Almighty. He has been very kind to you. You have got a lot of things. But one thing is, we don't thank anyone who are very close to us. We keep thanking Tom, Dick and Harry, whom we don't even know many a time. But when it comes to thanking our own people, we are very stingy. Thank, start th thanking your parents, thanking your friends. Thank the institution, your teachers. And further, I always say, first lesson to learn in ASMSOC is, or School of Commerce is, humility, being humble. This young generation has a lot of arrogance in, the, in them. What arrogance, I don't understand. They're bent on, hell-bent on fighting with everyone, with our security, with our peon, given a choice. No, be humble. You win, the, you win the world, I tell you. Your humility will take you a long way. Be very humble. That's very, very important. One of the character that every child should imbibe in him or her. So there's another thing that you should remember. And second year, you'll do a corporate internship. That is 25 May, you will do the corporate internship for 240 hours. It may be around two months, I can say. That's compulsory. Both are compulsory. And I want parents who are in, a, uh, what to say, in corporate, please leave your cards with us, your visiting cards, so that we can approach you for internship. Because we do give the internship to the students, but it's a huge number, 1,000 students, 1,000 plus. I will have to put them for internship. If at all you people help, it will be a... It will be really helpful to, for us if at all you have your visiting card, leave with us. So this other thing, internship. We have what we call as international linkage. On 17th after 2.30, you have an induction program. In that, the international linkage people will be talking to you, and you will get to know a lot of things about that. Plus, we have tied up with ACCA. They also will help you to know a lot of things. So I just come to, I want to conclude now. As I told you, I can go on like this. When I meet my kids, I feel I have to tell so many things to them. I'll be meeting them personally and telling them. But few things to conclude before I thank you. I want to quote. I want to quote Swami Vivekananda. He had said, there is... I repeat, here is a test of truth. Here is a test of truth. Anything that makes you weak, physically or intellectually, reject it as poison. The test of truth is anything which makes you weak, physically or intellectually, reject it as poison. There is no lift in it. It cannot be truth. Truth must be strengthening, must be enlightening, must be invigorating, that is what is said. So I want to 
my children to remember it is intellectually strengthening and spiritually strengthening. I don't say you become spiritual. I want intellectual caliber to grow. And that is possible when you say no to what? No to smoking, no to drinking, no to your, what you call as your play, video games, and no to drugs. They may give you a kick in a minute, but they are not true. It is a very short-lived thing. So always have an intellectual development. Think and discuss with your friends and grow intellectually. And that is what you have been here. That is what you want to grow with. And that is what I expect each one of you to commit yourself. And I tell you, biggest problem with this world is loss of manoeuvre. You waste too much of time. Time pass, yaar. What is time pass? Do not do that. Wastage of human efforts, human energy, it's too much in our country or across the globe. I want my children to apply themselves. Make use of time. Time management is very important. I always say that the only thing which we cannot say. And time gone, only two things you have in your hand. One is either the good result or regret. You decide whether you want to regret or you want to have good results. If you apply the time properly, you will have good results. If you don't, you will only regret saying that, I wish I had done this. I but no wishes. No po it's not possible because time is gone. I want my kids to make best use of the available time. Next three years, you just see how you grow. And your parents should be proud of you. And I should be more proud of you. Thank you. Now I request the parents and the um, auditorium to get empty because there is a lot of uh, people standing out. We have a question and answer session. We will take it up later. If at all audi is empty, you can join us at uh, 1.130 where question and answer can be taken up. Thank you for being there. It was wonderful to meet you, not, though not personally. We'll catch up over a period of time. Okay, thank you. Hello. Uh, just a second, please. Uh, exit is from this side. The exits are to your left and at the back. Please do join us for refreshments. And there will be a Q&A session uh, at 2 p.m. in the auditorium. Thank you.